surprise are the Hawaii Shmai. Let's talk about Ireland because um, these guys, they've toured the world and spent many years sharing the stage with top Irish dancers, including Michael Flatley himself, former lead Lord of the Dance performers, and now New Zealand-based dance teachers Siobhan London and Katie Kerrigan join us to tell us about their careers as well as a fabulous St. Patrick's Day event. Welcome to you both. Yes, welcome. Woo! Well, that's for tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now, Siobhan, you joined Michael Flatley's Lord of the Dance 15 years ago yeah. and toured with him, went all over the world. You were actually the lead role. Yes, yes. So I played the lead role of Saoirse with um, Michael Flatley's Lord of the Dance and it was just such an experience. Why do you yeah. think that really took off? I mean, it's part of the world's institution when it comes to dance now. What was so special about it? I don't know. I think um, just people... I had the music, like, the, you know, seeing them get up there. The first performance was um, in the Eurovision. Um, and I think people just were stunned with a lineup of dancers, mm. you know, all at the same time, you know, doing things exactly the same. And I don't know, the music and everything was just amazing. And, and Katie, the same with you. I mean, you joined Michael Flatley's Lord of Dance about 15 years ago. Was that, as a dancer, a dream come true? Yes. So Lord of the Dance would have come out when I was about 12, 13. Wow. So it, it was there and it was like, that's what I want to do. That's where I want to go. So we were lucky enough to have that um, sort of out there to aspire to. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's a bit like, you know, hip hop dancers that, you know, they all want to be Paris Goebel, who's on the show on Monday, I have to Thanks say, to talking about dancers, <laughs> you know, and that's the pinnacle, mm. isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So what was it like working with Michael himself? Well, such an experience, like, you know, he's like the top, the top, you know, and just to learn from him and be able to dance next to him was just, I don't know, such an unreal experience. OK, a little glimpse behind the scene, because every time I've seen him in an interview, he seems fun, he seems, you know, like he's having a good time. When it comes to the dance, is he serious and does he get a little grumpy? <laughs> um, N n yes, I mean he's a director, <laughs> right. and he had. So he at takes one it seriously. Time, yeah, yeah, at one time there was four troops of dancers around the world doing, you know, what he um, made from scratch. So yeah, he's particular in the way that things need to be good and they need to be on point. But I don't think it would be what it was if he wasn't like that. Right. Yeah. Did you have any standout moments when you were doing those tours? Was there anything that you just went, "Wow, <laughs> this is it"? Yeah. Well, I think. Not to speak for you, but both of us actually got to dance lead with him. Right, wow. Which was wow. something I never personally thought would happen to no. me. Um, and it was when he came back, he sort of left for a while, and then when he came back, we both had the opportunity to dance alongside him doing the lead role. So that was sort of a, I mean, you can't... You know, and these that. big arenas. Yeah, and tell us, yeah, how many like, people are we talking? I mean, a couple of shows I know I've done to 60, 70,000 people. Wow. We've danced yeah. to, you know, Madison Square Gardens and, you know, big arenas in Budapest, Taiwan, you know. You're a rock star, <laughs> yeah. aren't you, of the yeah. dance world? That's amazing. Well, it would be quite a life achievement, wouldn't it, standing in a Wembley Stadium with, yeah. you know, 50,000 people and you're performing, and that's just an incredible moment. But what made you, after, I guess, nine years of being away from home, decide to come back home? I think you, you tour for a long time and you love it and you love, you're like a rock star, like you said, but you, you miss your family and, right. you know, being from New Zealand, it's, it's, a, it's a long way to come. Mm. So, yeah. you know, you don't often get to come home. So I think it just got to a point for me, I was ready to hang up the shoes and move home and, you know, start pass teaching. Yes, yeah. pass on my knowledge to, you know, to these younger ones. What's it been like coming home? Yeah, I think at first it was it was a little bit weird because you've been on tour for a long time and, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're living on sleeper buses, you're in a different city every day, you know, it, it was like just cra such a crazy world we lived in and then you move home and everything's just slower pace. Much Kiwi slower. Kiwi style. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and okay. there's not 60,000 people there going, go dance for <laughs> yeah. me, yeah. 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 Yes, we have cities smaller than that. <laughs> yeah. um, Katie, you're originally from the US, so what yes. brought you here and are you enjoying it? Love New Zealand. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually here because Siobhan actually toured with two of her brothers. We're on tour oh, with nice. Lord of the Dance at the same time. Started dating one of the brothers, and I've married to one of the brothers oh, now. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm actually here for love and Aww. dancing. <laughs> it's a small world, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, and what are you doing now, you know, in New Zealand in terms of the dancing? Are you teaching? Are you, you know, creating tours or obviously helping out with the St. Patrick's Day festivals that are coming up? Yeah, well, um, Siobhan's mom had a school for 
So mum, so 40, 40 years mum had the school wow. and she retired and when I moved home um, took over the dance school and um, then Katie, um, I was lucky to have Katie move here and now we teach together so we've got a big dance school and we've got lots going on. Yeah, I bet <laughs> you're busy. And the Harvey sisters who we saw before, um, are, are they your pupils? They're our pupils, yes. So that's um, a family of three that we have. Um, they're an amazing family. They just they, they go for it. Yeah, every, the, every chance they get. Beautiful yeah. girls, beautiful dancers. And have got a good mix of boys and girls doing yeah. Irish dancing. We've got a few boys. We're trying to hold on to the boys. Right. Yep. So um, we've got quite a few little boys coming up. So that's good. It's good. It's good for your, you know, your, for, for your strength and for physical oh, it's, growth. Yeah. Tell us yeah. about that. Like how how fit do you have to be to be up there doing those steps? Because you don't stop, hey. No. <laughs> I think when you. When we were on tour, we didn't realize how fit we were because you're yeah. doing something every day and you're sort of at your peak um, and you're doing it and then you come home, you're off a few months, you go back to class and you realize, whoa. Whoa, it's yeah. gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you have to keep up with it to keep the fitness. So it's, it's still good for us to um, be teaching. We still get to keep up a little bit of the fitness, but nowhere as near as fit as we were <laughs> a couple <laughs> okay. years ago. Okay, okay, tell us about the St. Patrick's Day Parade, uh, which is on tomorrow. What's your involvement with that? Yep, so we've got dancers um, walking in the parade. So our dance school, Connolly School of Irish Dance, is going to be walking in the parade. Um, and then they dance at the end of the parade at Western Park. And then, um, yeah, so come on down, everyone come on down and see our dancers perform. So. And that parade's got bigger and bigger each year, hasn't it? Yes, um, I mean, I, I used to walk in the parade, we used to have floats in the parade and we used to go down Queen Street and ended up in Hattier Square. So it's um, a little bit different now, it uh, goes down Ponsonby Road and ends up in Western Park. But I mean, I used to dance in the parade every year, so it's great now that I get to sit back and watch our kids yeah. perform. Yeah. And, um, and I guess, you know, as a teacher now, you've got these kids, they've seen you go from dancing in New Zealand to dancing on the world stages, you yeah. know, in, at Wembley Stadium, you know. Yeah. What do you say to them so that they can be you one day? Just having an end goal, I think, even if it's to do well at the next competition, which is in a couple of months' time. Just keep um, making goals for yourself and then trying to achieve them. We were lucky and got to be that one in however many thousands or whatever to do the professional route. Hopefully the, the shows are going to be there when the kids we're teaching now grow up to mm -hmm. um, be that age and if they want they could be in a show but if not, yeah, just making small goals and achieving them and just keep practicing. Nice work. So you're loving New Zealand clearly, aren't you? Love New Zealand, yeah. yeah it's, it's hard not to like it. It's <laughs> laid back and... Nice work. And well done for taking over the Mother's yes. School of Dance. That's awesome. What was the name of it again? Connolly School of Irish Dance. There you go. Yes. Nice work. Thank you so much, ladies. Have fun tomorrow. The St Patrick's Day Festival continues tomorrow in Auckland, as we heard, with the parade down Ponsonby Road, followed by an afternoon of family fun with an Irish music and dance festival at Western Park. And we have a very special St Patrick's Day performance coming up soon from the gorgeous Harvey Sisters. Yeah, aren't they just lovely? Can't wait to see them perform.